Uh, yes, brothers and sisters, we're back. The Knee Divvies podcast. We've got a different name, but the game remains the same. Today's special guest, Paul Greenoff. Fighting trolls. How are you, brother? Absolutely fantastic. And do you know what, man? It's a fucking, it's a pleasure, mate. Honestly, it's a pleasure. Can I just say one thing? You know, because I swear a little bit, is that right? Well, listen, Paul, you're just going to have to do the best you can. To stop. Just going to have to do the best you can. Mm-hmm. Keep your swearing to a minimum. We don't want any insults. We don't yeah, want anybody yeah. going after anybody. It's not really yeah. how we're doing on this no, channel, no, Paul. No. But um, I'm going to give you plenty of chance to talk. You see, the aim for me with this podcast without Paul, is to <clears throat> give people an insight, you know, into the man himself. I've never seen him been interviewed, I've never seen him any, you know, ask any of the questions which I might ask. So, you know, I think it's only right to his followers, you know, and to even to the people who dislike him, to everybody out there, you know, to the whole YouTube community, you know, I think it's only right that uh, we give Paul a chance to tell his story, you know, and you know, get himself out there as who he is, as Paul Greenoff, not fighting trolls. Get up there, thank you. Know you know what I'm saying, Charlie? Right? Hey, thank you very much, mate. No problem, mate. Now listen, Respect. I have a particular format. Yeah. I like to go back to the start. I like, so first of all, Paul, tell us where you were born. I'm talking, give us a little run up to your life up until you're about 10 years old. Where you yeah. were born, relationship with your parents. Yeah. What, what was some of your earliest yeah. years like? Right. So I was born in St. Asif, 1988. And um, obviously my mum and dad were together then. Uh, I had a nice childhood, you know, I had everything I wanted, clothes wise, playing football, I did all, I had it lovely. Up until 11, yeah? That's when it all went downhill. I was a little bit naughty before 11, but 11 was when it started going downhill for me. Relationship with your mum and dad like? That's, that's why I think it went downhill, they split. Right. And I, got diagnosed with ADHD and uh, it just basically went down downhill for me from then mate, to be honest. Is this the, you know, do you remember sort of things changing when you were diagnosed with this? Was it the acknowledgement that you were a bit different? And- yeah, it was the aggression and the anger and the, you know, like, like if I'd have, like if my mum would like have a little bit of an I'd just like smash doors in, I was only 11, I was putting me hand, you remember them old like doors, the, I don't know if you remember of the old like the thin cardboard cardboard doors, yeah. And like I was at heaven, you know, I was like ten and eleven, I was putting doors through and that, you know. Like it, it, it's not good it's not good, is it mate? <clears throat> what but, was it what was this inside? Where was this anger coming from? I think it was what what I think it was, it was because obviously my mum and dad split up. That's the only reason I can think of. Because I had a good childhood mate, I had it all. You know, I had all the best clothes, all the best things on holidays. You know, I had the best schooling, the best food, the best that I lovely home, you know, but like, I think, you know, my dad, you know, messed up the relationship with my mum, and obviously she bent him off, and you know, went a bit down and for me, from that age, like, you know what I mean? <coughs> right, tell me a bit about, you started getting into trouble about 11-ish. Yeah, so 11-ish, mate, 11-ish was when, just before I started going to high school, was when I started hanging around with a little bit of the old lot, you know what I mean? Start smoking, drinking and act on the sly and, you know, being a bit of a naughty little boy. So, when it started going downhill more, I went into year 11, during the first year of high school. So, got into high school, was only there for six weeks, right? Permanently excluded. Got year seven, is that not? First year? Year seven, seven. Yeah, year seven. seven. Yeah, year, 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 year seven, yeah, year seven. Yeah, year seven, yeah. So, I was in year seven, six weeks, or, or eight weeks, it might have been, something around that, and I was permanently excluded. They said to me, mum and dad, listen, he's not allowed 150 metres around the whole perimeter of the school. If he does, we see him, please get called. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it was for um, just going mental in classes, like so. Say, like, I was sitting in a class like this now, and I was just, because I had a bit of, like the ADHD, I was then agitated, and I just chucked things, and like if a teacher said something, I'd be like, what? Jump up, what? What the fuck? And then they'd obviously get the, like, the headmasters in, and, like the Garth Jones is in, like the you know the special teachers and, and they take me out and I was just a I was just a proper proper nuisance fit. Was this <clears throat> permanent exclusion? Was this like a um, a build up of like you know sort of multiple behaviour of the same sort of 
nature. You yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I, uh, yeah, a hyperactive. Yeah. Like, like very, very, very hyperactive, naughty, naughty kid. Like, yeah. So I think I was, I, I was the only person that in that whole school from still to now that went from year seven up until then to, to be permanently excluded. I think it was <clears> not even <throat> six weeks or eight weeks. I'm sure it was not even. I can't remember the exact thing, but it was definitely only that right time. And I was gone. See you later. They couldn't call. Do you know what I mean? Did you never have any um, sort of special help? You know, yeah, to, I had to um, cater for this Yeah, I had, to, um, I had um, a social worker, uh, Jackie. She used to come and take me to like McDonald's and uh, Kalati and you know, to try and talk me and try and change me and yeah. try and help me. And what well, they tried to put me on tablets when I was young, but my mum, like, between, well, I don't know if this will get in trouble, like, which would have given me. So that's why with the swan, I have the swan, which you'll be telling me the story the next week, you'll hear about his tablet thing. I didn't take up, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a bit of hype on sometimes. So like I'm always like up and up down and because obviously I've still got it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not gonna leave you, is it? So yeah, so I got kicked out of that school and when I was off school I left for a couple of months. Um, or in them couple of months I was hanging around with the wrong people still and I was going out getting drunk, my mum was out everywhere looking for me and I was just being naughty, robbing crates out of shops and I was only a kid, do you know what I mean? I was hanging around with all the people and that, you know, and, and there was a place called the Abbey <coughs> in, uh, in Greenfield. Um, yeah, so it's like a, an old monastery, that's where we all used to drink. So that's why, like, you know, my mum used to come there, get home, get home, always worried about me, like, do you know what I mean? I was naughty and I, I, I regret it now. Because obviously I know she just loved me and, you know, I yeah. regret it, like, so, yeah, so from then, from then, obviously I was off for a bit, they put me into a special skill called Fluid On. And that was a referral school, have you ever heard of one? Yeah. A referral school, so yeah, so I went to a referral school from the age of 11 up until, so year 7, year 7, going into, so from year 7 to 10, year 10, like two years left of normal school, I was in a referral school. But in a referral school, to be honest, I started changing a little bit, do you know what I mean? Um, it, was, it was actually alright, you know, we played pool and I went to football and um, we were just in classes with like three of us, do you know what I mean? And we were getting proper like, proper like looked after, it was good. It was good. Then I, when I was in year 10, they gave me another chance in Flint, right? So I got another chance half, half a day a week. So I went in half a day a week and that was all right. I went a day a week and then I went two days a week and I went three days a week and then it built up, up until I was in there full time, yeah, they accepted me full time. Yeah. That lasted about a month. <clears throat> and I ended up going crazy with one of the teachers. Um, what was his name? Sorry, I can't even remember his name. I ended up going absolutely nuts on him. So I was in a PE lesson and I can't remember what it was, what happened, but I ended up just going nuts, pushing him. I went, I don't describe too much, but that was it. Boom, see you later, you're not in this school, we'll give you a chance. See you later. So that was it, I was out again. What's this, 15 year old? Is yeah, is yeah, um, 10, 15, yeah, 15, 14, 15, yeah. Yeah, I was around that age. So then, after that, like, it was just tight on me, mum, you know, it was tight because obviously they split up and that. Um, I just felt tight, and, but in between that, I was living with me mum and dad, and me nanny, yeah. So it was like, I, with me right there, um, she was the one that could just control me because I'd never ever, ever, ever disappear, do you get what I mean? So I didn't be in between each parent and then, um, yeah, so um, after that I ended up going into college. So I got onto a bricklaying course, but it, was, it wasn't just a bricklaying course, it was a bricklaying course, but you had to do school with as well, do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we've done that and then, uh, I ended up getting kicked out there as well for, 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 for going down and getting pissed on a Friday afternoon and coming back in, uh, in the college, steaming, kicking off on everyone, just trying to fight everyone in there. So that was it, I was kicked out of college as well, do you know what I mean, mate? Uh, you got any long term mates still about you from back then, mate? Or? Have I got any long term mates around now? That were still around back then? Um, I have, kind of, but a couple of them have passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, you're okay, you just, we'll get into that. Like, uh, yes, uh, right. for, for all the, yeah. What's your relationship like? 
with the boys and that when you were knocking about with this sort of age? Uh, it was good, but they were a lot older than me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They were all a lot older than me and it was just like, they wasn't as naughty. Well, the lads, the, so I hung around with them for his family. I don't want to mention their names, but obviously when people watch this, they'll know who they are. They're a notorious travelling family. So I hung around with them as a young age, all the way through up until still to this day. I'll still, they're still my friends, do you know what I mean? Like, we don't see each other every single day, but we'll speak, and, you know, they're there for me. If I ever need anything, they're there for me, do you get what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I hung around with them, but I, I, hung, I, I hung around with all different sets of people, but, <coughs> like, I'd say, like, the notorious Chandler family have been my friends all the way up until today, and obviously my friend Mikey James from the age of 11, obviously he sadly passed away now, I'll get into that soon, he's been, he was my best friend up until he passed away in 2020, like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah, so. So, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we first went to jail when you were 17. Yes, I sure did. <clears throat> now, talk, I want to talk about a little bit of the period running up to that, yeah. six month period or so running up to that, no what problem. exactly happened, no why you were in jail, which yeah. jail you went to, and we'll get into when you get to jail, when yeah. you're on your way, I want to know all the little nitty gritty things, no problem, how man. you were feeling when you first yeah. went, no etc. So six months before this, I was actually working in a job called Cochlin, yeah? It was very good money, so I was travelling the country with the notorious travel family and a couple of others uh, we go down picking cockles <coughs> and earning good money. Anyway, so I ended up smashing my mum's uh, boyfriend's car up, husband's car up. Uh, just, you know, I can get a <laughs> smash up with a hammer and that. But they phoned the police on me and I got arrested for it. So I went to court for it, got criminal damage. Anyway, got put on attack for it. But I wanted to go cockling, do you know what I mean? So I thought, sack this off, I'm cut with my tag off. Boom, cut it off, went cockling, earned a bit of wedge, got wrecked every night. Come back home, police come for me, nicked me, took me back to court, they gave me another chance, put me back on tag again. I done the same thing, then I went back down there, cut the tag off, come back home, got nicked, went back to court, and that was it, wasn't it? Jail. 17. But my mum was there. Yeah. No, 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 I'm telling you. So, so, I got, because I got nicked, my mum knew I got nicked. So, when, they, when they, you get nicked, you go to the police station, then they take you to court next day, don't they? So, she knew, obviously, I was in court. So, she's come to court. I've been in court there. And then, obviously, it was only magistrates. And I just thought, I was just going to, I was only a kid. In my own head, I thought, I'm just going to get a tag again. So, they said to me, they said, well, they said, like, talking and that, they went out. Come back in next minute, the, the officers, the screws came in that way. I thought, shit, I'm going to jail here. So I turned it out, looked at my mum, it was only a little skinny kid, didn't it? Looked at my mum like that, uh, she's like crying, didn't it? So that was it, I started crying. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to tell the truth on here, do you know what I mean? So I started crying, took me downstairs into the things. But I had all my mates in Stokeheath, didn't I? So in my own head, I thought, oh, I'm buzzing, I'm going to go with all my mates, you know? Like, I, mean, I actually, I, I cried a little bit for my mum, but when I was down there, I was actually buzzing. It was like, I was buzzing. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to jail. You know, I'm going to jail and all the boys did that. You know, because all the boys from my head, he was in jail. So, uh, yeah, so when we were down there, they were like, yeah, blah, 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 I've done all your paperwork, you go to Stokeheath Park. Um, blah 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 blah, sweet. So the bus come, there was uh, six of us on the bus. But when we was on the bus, there was six of us, but there was a few of them that had already been in jail. So they're doing all that jail talk and all that. We're going home, blah blah blah, blah blood, this, we are, blah, you know, all that carry on. I didn't know it, did I? So I was like a little bit nervous. So when we got to Stone Keith, it was late, yeah? It was pretty late, it was all six and shot six. So they, they come on, they said, listen lads, we've got some really bad news for you. Two of you have uh, got to go to Wellington House. And I thought, oh, please don't be me. And it was only me, wasn't it? Me and this lad from uh, House of Report called Danny Finley. Danny, if you're watching this, you'll remember it, son. So it was me and him. So anyway, they, the other four went off, me and Danny Finley was still on the bus. We had to go to Wellington, we got to Wellington late on, man. Must have been about half, half, uh, half nine, half eight, half nine or something. But as soon as we got there, went through reception, but they just rushed us through, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be honest, I'll shit myself down. Shit, flapping it. You, know, you go around, you're a young kid, not expecting that. And I was like that when I was 17. 
I like that. So anyway, I got there and all that. Uh, but there was no space on the induction room upstairs, so they put us downstairs in on the enhanced bit. But the enhanced bit, there was like four four blocks there, and across the way there was two blocks, uh, four four pads, four doubles, and across the way there was uh, the block. So it was like the block and the enhanced bit on the same bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So me and this lad got planted up, and I thought, oh, this is all right, this isn't it? Lovely, but we didn't expect it. To, we, this is what I thought jail was like: mm -hmm. carpet yourself, lovely like things and that. I thought, oh, this is all right, mate. Mm -hmm. But little did I know that this was not where we were staying. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, blah blah blah. We stayed on there for like a day or two. Then he comes to us. He said, "Look, boys, you're moving." So. Uh, what well, they said to Danny, they said to Danny, they went, you're going on A Wing, uh, Green off, you're going on B Wing. So when I've landed on B Wing, don't forget I'm 17, I'm like a rat. When I've landed on B Wing, bro, I'm not joking, there was one white lad, right, and about 60 black lads, right, but these 60 black lads weren't little 60, they were like, right, <laughs> little June for that, I was pumped up, just gymmed up every day. I was white mate, I was shitting myself, clapping myself, but mm -hmm. to be fair, they all shit me nice, you know what I mean? They were like, I got a job and that, um, down on the brick lighting thing with them all and that, we still like play uh, poker and all that, like you know, everything was good, it was nice, but I ended up getting this pad mate, um, uh, yeah, I got this pad mate, so uh, this pad mate I got, he was a bit of a horrible lad, he was all right at first, and then, uh, so when we buy the canteen every week, he was making me like say, uh, so say we buy a canteen, he was making me like buy it, yeah, but like not not use it, just put it on show. Do you know what I mean? Do you ever think you mean, Jay? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was making me buy the canteen, but just put it all on show. So like some nights I'm like, oh, come do you have, we can get some of them. Oh, I'm like, they're hungry, like he's like, nah, nah, because it looks stupid and all that. So after like a week, a couple of weeks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks went by, he started uh, like, you know, like messing about, you know, hitting me and that. Like, and I thought, wow, is he being serious here? Like, and then as like the days went by, that was it, he started basically bullying me, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie, I'll tell the truth. Started like, so say I'm on the top bunk watching telly, he just jump up and just go bang, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, ah. And then sometimes he'd pull me off, yeah, and just start giving it me and that because I was just a timid young lad, I, I, was, I didn't know what to do. Like, I thought, if I bat him, like, what will happen to me? You know, all the, st all the stuff going through your mind. So from then on, I just left it. I didn't tell anyone, he didn't tell anyone what was going on. Because none of the lads on the, at that, like, down in work would say, like, said anything, do you know what I mean? But then my mum and I would be phoning me every day, and they could hear me every day, like, deteriorating in, like, the phone calls and they were like, what's the matter, what's the matter, what's the matter, please. Was he giving you proper hard time? Or yeah, it was time bad, mate, really bad, yeah, like really bad, mate, yeah, yeah like battering me every night, just, just treating me like a, like, he was, he was horrible, mate, horrible, yeah. So, uh, one night, no, what, yeah, so on the phone calls to me, mum, uh, one day I just broke down in it and just said, mum, I'm just, I just can't do it, I just don't want to be here, yeah. But everything else about the jail was mint. The wings was good, the labs were sound. We were just this little horrible rat. Yeah. Anyway, so one night, I was just, I was, I was like, I should like fucking kill him, so I kill him, so I kill him, so I run up and kill him, so I kill him. So what I done, I just jumped down, yeah? Just fucking, just look, all the stuff down, yeah? We had to brush it and pad, yeah? A brush, so I, I just, I just went mad, yeah? Got all the shower gels, started squirting all the shower gels on the floor. Grabbed the brush, snapped the brush, started whacking the windows in, yeah? Do you know the windows out? Where was he at at this stage? He was on the bed, he, he just didn't even say a thing, man. He just didn't say a thing, bro. Do you know what I mean? He didn't say a thing. Do you know what I mean? So I just started whacking the windows in, yeah? Obviously, the screws come, I was like, get me out of this fucking bed, get me out of this bed, I'm fucking going mad, yeah? And then obviously, like, I, I thought they'd come and, like, run in and twist me up, but they must have been, they could see I was crying, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes I cry with anger, do you know what I mean? So they could see I was crying, like, obviously, like, I was upset, you know what I mean? So when the SO come and the other guy come, they just come. Took me out. I just said, "Look, I can't handle being padded up with someone. I need to be on my own." I said, "It's my first time in jail." I said, "I can't do being padded up with someone. I've got to be on my own." I didn't like say he didn't believe me. I didn't. 
So what they've done, they put me down the block for like a night, and the next night he got me a pad on the same ring, right up above him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he didn't say a boo to me after. Didn't mm -hmm. say a boo to me, mate. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was like three, so like a couple of weeks I had left. Ended up getting out, but I'll be honest to you, that there helped me through my rest of my jail mm -hmm. because obviously I've done a lot of jail, I've learned. So that there, that, that first experience of going into jail helped me right the way through. Yeah. In in my mindset of how to how to be and how not to be and do you get what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I got out of there in two thousand and six. Uh, oh, what was it? Yeah, two thousand and six, and then um, what happened then? Yeah, so I got out in two thousand and six. Then about three months later, I got nicked for the for the, for the stabbing, which I didn't do. I'll tell you, just brought it to it now. So I was living at my dad's at this time. Uh, bless us all. Like I was living at my dad's, um, and I was working. I, I come out of jail and I got a job in a place called Mitre. Uh, making like these plastic things and that, yeah. So I was working there, and then uh, just one night, um, come home from work, and I was out all with my manners. And then next, next when I was in bed, and all I heard was bam, 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 bam on the door. So like, I was like, got up, I can't run on top of the stairs. My manners on top of the stairs, looking down, she's like, police are all outside, police are all outside. So yeah, I got to go downstairs, open the door, and at the door, at the, at the, um, at the door. Of, Guns, mate, yeah. So I'd like run up, looked outside, yeah. They were all like over, like in the exposed gardens, fucking all like lying down with all guns with all red things on me and all that. So when I come to back to the top of the stairs, my dad has come up, she's like, You know, take it in, you know, go mad. She's like, Send to her of age. And I was like, No, 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 please, because it's called the dentist. Like, no, 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 please, please, no, 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 please, just let me go, let me go. So she moved away, went down. You're like, we're arresting, you know, section 18. You've, um, you stabbed it, yeah, you've slashed someone tonight. So man got slashed from there to there, like a big deep thing, it wasn't me. Obviously, because I'll tell you the story in a minute why it wasn't me. So obviously I got nicked for that. Until the police station got nicked with section 18. Uh, we did it with intent. Uh, and then I got released. And then about, I think it was about five or six, no, what was it about three, four months later? I got an NFA through the door because it wasn't me. Do you know what I mean? It was not me. You know, like you never re interviewed enough for that. No, I, I just had that one interview and just yeah. got NFA. Uh -huh. So obviously, yeah. they must have known what they want. They obviously know it wasn't me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously, my name got put into it. So that's just what I'm going to say. There's a few things further on in my life where this happens. It's a regular occurrence. Do you know what I mean? So, to the people you've been associating with and that's yeah yeah well that's what i mean yeah it's because the people i've been associated with i'll just turn that off for a minute because of the people um because of the people i've been associated with, nothing against them because they're my friends in it but when you've got a bit of a name it's like you know the police it's mm -hmm. just no associates yeah no associates yeah so yeah yes mate well tell me a little bit about the next time you got sent to jail then what you're out well, of that was that was Literally, sounds a bit bad now because it's like it was about four months after I got an NFA on this one, yeah. So I come home from work from the same place, my ter, one night, and I see my mum. And I come home, and I was on a two ten shift. I was at my mum's at this time, so I come home, uh, open the door, and I walked in, see my mum on the stairs, like the crying on the stairs. The car, like, what, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? And she's like, Mark's been battered at me for years. He's been, I can't take it no more. He strangled me, he strangled me that hard that I, I, I nearly died, you know, like, he strangled her that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the marks and neck, he strangled her that hard. And that, like, basically, she she just went, you know, when she goes black, and give her the good eye, did. But obviously, he knew I was coming home from work. I was really a young lad, but he knew I was a fucking, a bit of a fucking, you know, didn't give a fuck, like, mm -hmm. so. Obviously, he must have fucked off. So I was like, cuddled her and you know, looked after her and all that. Said to her, I said, Listen, this is how I hear. So when I see him, he's getting it. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. He's getting it. So, anyway, after this, uh, I went on holiday to Turkey. Um, had a bit of trouble out in Turkey. Spent about too much money. 
end up having to get money off my family and all that, maybe, mate. <laughs> so, you know, one of them when you're only 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. So we had to be ending up like, going to having to get a load of money sent over. But you know, it is what it is. So come home, mum picked us up, she went to go and stay at your dad's for a while. So sent me to my dad's, but it was only a bank all the weekend when I come home from Turkey, on it? Sunday bank holiday. So my dad and all like my mates from down there, the older lot were all having bevies in the garden and that, weren't they? So went there and I bevied up and all that. And they were like, let's get up to town, innit? We'll go up to town and have a few bevies and that up there. I was like, no problem. But that, that's when I clicked in my head, I thought, oh, no problem. Because I wanted that little, that little helmet to do with my mum. So what I done, I went in my dad's kitchen, got a big, 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 big blade, yeah? Put it down my top, put it down my thing, but no one knew I had it, do you know what I mean? So went up to town, had a few beers and that in the top cross, and then me and Darren's decided to like leave my dad and that in the V-Guard and all the boys have a little nose downtown. So as we walked downtown, who did we see? We fucking stepped up, didn't we? Oh, that was it, that was it, game on. We stepped up and the three mates, it was game on there, a direct that I felt. Just run up to him, went to put it in him. But obviously he's like missed, yeah? And I've just got like a bam, 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 yeah? Cut him across the neck, across the arm and all that. But he was a lot bigger than me, do you know what I mean? I was only a skinny kid still. But I was being skinny up until about the last couple of years. And uh, I dropped a knife, have not I? And he started like, you know, like wrestling me and like, you know, overpowering me and shit. So then my mate Darren's come running over, picked up the knife. And like, because Darren's little, little chunk, Darren's like pushed him towards the phone box, you know, the phone boxes, and put the knife to his neck, yeah? Put the knife right to his neck. And then obviously, uh, one of my, my one of my ex mates, my mum's husband, is spied Darren, and <laughs> dropped Darren. So the knife is fell again. But anyway, I was like, let's just get off, get off, get off. So we run, run down, run down the Tesco ways, down Strand once. Anyway, Darren has like gone that way. I was like, listen, just get down because the chocolate's going to be out, obviously, in it. Do you know what I mean? Man? So um, I've gone down into like this little cave for, uh, in the woods, yeah? So you go down, it's like a cave. So even if the chocolate's down, there's no way of seeing it. I stayed there for ages and ages and ages. And I mean, hours, yeah? Just like, I could be out scared, Nick, yeah? And then uh, he got off the dick straight away, and did he? He went back up there, pissed up. Mm. Fucking, I'll tell you a story about him in a minute. Mm -hmm. so we ended up going back up there and getting nicked, yeah? So, me like a fucking sausage, innit? I've uh, waited for hours, and I've walked back up, or I've walked up to Strad once, and I've seen Ryan Till's sister, she's gone past there. She's gone, Paul, oh, the police are everywhere, looking for you to get in. So I jumped in the car, and she was like, come to wherever, she was like, can change clothes. So me, like a helmet as well, change clothes. I'm only walk back into town, I'm like, you're like an idiot. I ended up walking up the top of town, by the past the Vic and that, walking down, next minute I'll just be jumped on. <laughs> and I mean, jumped on, mate, it's by about 20 of them, yeah? Jumped on me. Mr. Green off and arrested your own tempted murder of Mark Corbett for, oh, Jesus, this is all I need to 18 years of age. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> So anyway, I got nicked for that, yeah, so I got nicked on the attempted murder and then uh, got, went to the police station. Is that yeah. incident there the first time you ever pulled and used a knife on anybody? Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to use a knife on anybody else. Was that the last time you've ever pulled a knife on anybody? Yeah. Right. Uh, that, yeah, I can think of, yeah. But I, I've been accused of obviously pulling knives out of people, right. but obviously that was the only time I've ever used a knife. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, stick this charge. Okay. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened to yeah. it. Anyway. So, um, yeah, so we got the attempted murder, um, both of us. Uh, we was in the police station for four days. I was gonna say four, I was gonna say four days then. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I did outside, didn't I? <laughs> I yeah. did outside, yeah. yeah. I did outside, didn't I? Yeah, four six years. Yeah. yeah, big four miles <laughs> one. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah. Carry so, on. Yeah, so anyway, going? we get nicked, yeah, um, go to the police station, get charged with sentenced murder, get remanded, uh, go up to Lancaster Farms because there's no place, nowhere space in all coast, yeah? So when we got into Lancaster Farms, back then, I don't know what, why or how, how they done it, but they let me run past us uh, full packs of fags, baggy, uh, and all that, do you know what I mean? So we were nice, we like, smoking our heads off and that. We was in Lancaster Farms for two weeks. 
But like Darren was saying to me, like, because he's done a bit of jail all through the juvies and that properly, um, like for a long time, he's like, look, you know, we're, we're going to be getting the tens and that for this, you know, like, don't you? So I'm flapping me thinking, Pff, I don't know, do you know what I mean? 10 years, mate, Jesus. So anyway, uh, after two weeks went by, we got transferred then back to court, was it? Yeah, back to court for uh, another plea. I think it was a plea area this time. And then we, I went guilty, he went guilty. So that was it then, back to our course, because it was play, uh, space in our course. And then uh, we was there for another 30 odd days. And then I was in back to court. I got four and a half, uh, four and a half years on a guilty plea. So it was around about seven years something, but because you take your third off, don't they? So I got four and a half, and he got three years. I think he got like something like for four and a half, dropped to three years for guilty. Something like that, I don't know. So then, uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, that was it then. I, I was just doing jail time at that time, four and a half years at the age of 18, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. for, for doing that to that horrible man. But since that day, he hasn't stepped foot back in Hollywood now. Have you, Mike? And you know you won't, because obviously you're my friends, and that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <coughs> Come back. All right. So what was jail like for you this time, second time round, big sentence? Oh, lovely mate, lovely. Lovely? No, I'll tell you what happened straight away first. So, gone in there, lands on the induction, oh, not induction, maybe it was called the First Night Centre, yeah? That's right. So, in all course, yeah, the First Night Centre. So, we land on the First Night Centre, there's a lad called Kieran, uh, what's his name? Kieran Salkel, what's his name? Kieran Sendall, Kieran Sendall from Flint, proper lunatic mate, absolute psychopath. He's just got a 10 now, he's a oh, lunatic. So I was on there with Kieran, uh, Kieran Sendall. Uh, my cold, he, he, had, he got moved off because he was uh, high risk, yeah. Darren, who was with me, I didn't see him half, basically through the whole sentence. So I ended up going from the, uh, what do you call it, the. First night, night, first night sent it over to uh, the induction wing and I got padded up with uh, Kieran but he was just, he was a bit of a live wire so he was like, look we'll stick together, you know, we'll, you know, blah blah blah, we'll stick together obviously we're both Welsh, you know, like carry on so I was like, yeah, no problem, so about three, four days later the screws come to us about, uh, I think some hour seven, hour eight at night they said to us, um, yeah, you're moving over to Beaches Blue he's like, okay, no problem, we'll pack that stuff and they must have needed the space for someone coming in, you know, from court. So we've got over there, but when we've got over there, it was all locked down, wasn't it? You know, locked, everyone's locked up. So when you hear the trolleys coming, everyone's at the windows out there with a lock, and you know, everyone's going past everyone. Like, I don't know how to say this in, in a way where, because my mate was half cast, so I don't know how to say it in like basically they were saying racial slurs. So they were saying racial slurs out the window, yeah? So we got into, got into, got on the way, got into the pad. And obviously people shout out the windows, don't they? So what, like, all the scouts was like, we shout, yo, where are you from? Blah, 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 blah. And they were all like, obviously still shouting racial slurs, this, that, the other. I had my toothbrush with me, then I like that, on the bed. Not on the bed, on the floor, like that. <laughs> Shape, I didn't like sharpening it up, do you know what I mean? I was only a kid still, what I know, do you know what I mean? I was sharpening it up, thinking like it's going off in the morning because he was arguing with him all night, like I'd have been proper arguing. So as soon as breakfast comes in the morning, uh, as soon as breakfast comes in the morning, basically we was at the door, all ready out, do you know what I mean? But looking around, nothing happened until about 10, 15 minutes later, and then one scout would come, two scouts would come police scouts would come and then they all just came in that path but they were being sound yeah but sly sound do you get what I'm saying oh, being yeah. sly sound so everything was all right and then uh, we all got we all like got banged up and all that again and then that night time he was on a visit with bad mate yeah so he was on a visit uh, and it was social time so he went on a visit and on social time I was just like standing by the door do you know just like, we're like looking at him playing pool, like going around the bed. And I was paranoid, I was anxious, I was, you know, I was in a man's jail at 18, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not used to it and that, <coughs> probably. And then, uh, anyway, 
So a couple of these counselors came in and was like, where's your mate, lad? I was like, hi, he's on a visit, you know, wait. He's like, you all right, no lad, yeah? You all right, you lad, you lad? I was like, yeah, man, just, uh, I mean, well, you know, you're like, what you're in for and all that. Like, I was like, well, I'm in for fuck, yeah, I'm in for just uh, give, giving my stepdad one, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because you battered me, man. You're like, oh, fair play, lad. So they went off for that. Anyway, my dad, they came back, came and come off a visit. As soon as he's come off, they must have been watching him, innit? So he's come through the door, gone onto the toilet. I've been lying on the bed, and it next minute this, uh, you know, heroin addict, uh, you know, when you play him, heroin <clears> addict, <throat> like in the pad, he's been having a bed, and he's just got a cast straight across, straight across his thing there, uh, blood everywhere. So obviously he's pulled his finger up, run outside, I've jumped up, but obviously, like, he, he was scarpered, you couldn't see him. And obviously, the officers have seen that, and they're having a all blood coming and it'd be made because he's a nutcase kid and I said no, he was going off his nuts, hey, who's that? You know, he's screaming, he's just blood everywhere, you know what I mean? I thought, oh, is this what jail's like? Yes, yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, was, it was a bit of a pretty scary experience. Yeah. So, obviously, the men got locked down in it, and then obviously, all the officers come, they were like, who's done it? He's like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not saying anything. He said the same, we don't know, we're not saying anything. They said, but look, we have to get you off the leg for, like, you know, safety purposes, in it? So they took him over to healthcare and put me over on Val Red. So when I got over onto Val Red, it's only an enhanced wing, isn't it? Oh, belter, best mm -hmm. wing in the jail. Mm -hmm. So I was nice then for months and months and months. But what I started doing, I started working with people, I'm not going to say who, but I started working with them, getting the parcels, yeah? Because I had the job in the kitchens. Uh, so in the morning, just what I'd do is uh, go and pick up the milk. I'd go and deliver the milk to each wing. So obviously the throw overs, you know. I was working with them and I was doing nice, you know what I mean? I was, I was living nice, I was living comfortable. I wasn't asked about the drugs, because at that time, like, I didn't take anything, not one thing. They just want weed, nothing in jail, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I was just like, just after like loads of munch, and just, you know, how it is when you're in jail, you want your pants fat, don't you? 20 yeah. Lenores, 15, 150 yeah. shower gels. All the milks. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the milks, you know, all the, all the exclusive this, that, the other. So anyway, yeah, so I was doing that for a while, and then I uh, got grassed up, obviously, didn't I? So this is when I'm going to tell you about Smaggle in a minute. So anyway, yeah, so... What did you Go on, Shawnee, man. So anyway, so yeah, so I uh, ended up getting a security ship down to uh, all course to Stone Keith. But when I've got to Stone Keith, because obviously I've not really done much jail, my record's all right. I don't know, they must have seen the security fire on me there, I don't know why. So I was only there for, for like a day or two, and I got a, a, on the induction wing in uh, Stone Keith, and I got a uh, caffeine with you, yeah? Uh, I think it was a day or two after, I was going to Cat D. Uh, and I was off to Cat D, I was like, this is sick, mate. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I had to go to Cat D, and uh, yeah, so I went to Fall Cross. The, uh, the day that I went to Fall Cross was the day uh, Madeline Mechanic, and I remember it perfect. It was the day Madeline Mechanic uh, disappeared, it was about June the 3rd or 4th or 5th, uh, 2007. So I remember going in the sweat box and listening to it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like some things I remember very well. And then, um, yes, yeah, so uh, I'm off to Stokey, I'm off to uh, Farm Cross now, the same sentence. Uh, yeah, so what I've done there was just, you know, word, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you one story about Snaggle. I got mixed up with, um, like, Snaggle and all the boys, like, a really good, you know, tight, tight team. So one day I come out the shower, well, obviously, Slagle, it was, you know, a big guy, wasn't he? He is a very big guy, and I think, he, he obviously, in jail, he takes steroids and that with the big guys, don't they? So one day, I've come out the shower, and he kicked me in it. So I turned around and gone, who the fuck are you fucking kicking, you little prick, in it? Do you know what I mean? He's gripped me around the neck, chucked me up the beast of the wall, and did that, yeah? He's got you ready to speak to me like that, girl, and I'll smack your jaw. So he's let me go, I've turned around, and I've gone, you fucking bell end. And he's just come running over and gone, Boom! <laughs> literally, mate, yeah. literally, I swear down, yeah. Literally, yeah. I swear, my eye, yeah, he broke my eye socket, yeah. 
and that I was like that for it. He regretted it after, like, he was like, what, yeah? Obviously, I had to go to hospital to, like, get it checked out and all that kind of And then, uh, when I got back from hospital, like, he was, like, you know, apologetic. Like, he was, like, so, so sorry. He was giving me beer, he was this, yeah. he was... He was just, because he was, he, was, he regretted it because he was my mate, innit? Went a bit me? far. Huh? Went a bit far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a good thing, like, I'll give him that. Okay, like, yeah, you take a bit of stuff and... Hey, uh, I'll give you the, I'll give you that, Shorty boy. I'll give you that, so... <laughs> yeah, so, what happened after that then? I was, uh, I'll be honest with you, mate, I was getting me home leads in there. Uh, not me home leads, we town visits in there, uh, Far Cross. Uh, when I was getting picked up, I was uh, flying straight home. Because it's only down about way 20 minutes. You know what I mean? 25 minutes to Wales from uh, Walter, from one end of the back in it, you know what I mean? So I was uh, coming back with weed and that. Not only really with it, I was coming back with Rocky, do you know what I mean? Plugging it and uh, coming back having a little shot with it because I did mind a little bit of Rocky, do you know what I mean? Not that skunky, I fucked that. Uh, so I had a little bit of chomp, but I was making the canteen, you know, my munch was back here. And, so I was doing that every two weeks, and uh, one week I, I uh, come back, but I was late. So, because my mum didn't know what I was doing, she took me out for food, and then uh, I had to go to my mates and have the Rocky. So she was like, hurry up, hurry up. So I didn't have time to grab it, and you know, deal with it. Do you know what I mean? Deal with it, I mean, bank it. If you don't know what bank it is, it's, you know. Put it on the shelf. Put it on the shelf. The prison it. pocket. The prison pocket. Yeah. Anyway, so I didn't have time to prison pocket it. But there's only one time, that, 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 that only one time, right, when I've come back, they had all the dogs on, didn't they? So, that was it, it was game over for me, wasn't it? Game over for me. That was it. Yeah. And they had all the time, you know what happened? So they, they uh, obviously got the dogs on me, sniffed it out, I passed it on, they made me strip search even more. Did you know what they done to me? Mr. Davis' his name is. So if anyone knows Mr. Davis from Stoke, uh, from uh, Farm Cross in 2007, what a horrible little human being he was. Horrible, mate. Anyway, so what they done to me then, they put me down a block for a week and then shipped me back to Stoke Keith. Oh, I was wounded. So for all that four and a half year sentence, mate, I went from there to there to there to there to there. Well, 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 we never got to the bottom of what did, what did they screw do to you? We never got to the bottom of that. Which one was the name? Yeah, what did he No, that's just what I'm saying. He made me squat, did he? Ah. He was making me squat when you're not allowed. Do you get what I mean? I passed him what he had, ah. but he was making me squat and put the men in there. Do you get what I mean? You, 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 it's not allowed, is it, though? Ah. Do you get what I mean, mate? It's it, it's not allowed. I'm not told it's not allowed. It's against the law. I think he's been sacked off. I mean, he was a horrible. He was from the army, and he was just a bully. He was he used to go in people's pads at night and just like rip them out the pad and just like rip the. Do you know what I mean? He's just a bully, mate. I'm not into officers like that. I'd rather an officer just be straight, <coughs> be straight with them. I see officers now, yeah, like from Birmingham out in Chester and that, and they show me respect in jail, I'll show them respect out here, just because they're an officer, yeah. you know, if it's, the, yeah. if, it's, if it's the police, it's a different matter, right? I'm not joking. Yeah, but listen, it is what it is, yeah. So, yeah, so I had to go back to Stoke Keith, uh, yeah, and I got out of Stoke Keith that time, and, uh, yeah, so that was the end of the four year, or that four and a half year sentence, 27 moon. Okay. Check it by this time you've been taking drugs in jail. No, no, only a little tiny, tiny bit of Rocky. And that up until it. this age, I told you've ever had a bit of Rocky. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Yeah. Have you had any substance abuse problems, Paul? Uh, do, you, do you want to know the truth about people? That's why you're here, bro. No, people think I do, yeah, but I've never really had this. The only substance misuse, abuse I've had is alcohol, where I've abused alcohol. I've sniffed coke. Uh, but only recreational, so I won't go and sit in a house on my own and sniff cock, but I'll go out on a party and fucking have a blast. You get what I mean? Yeah. So if it's a Friday night and I'm out in a pub, I'll have a blast. And I don't care what anyone says, you can say what you want. Yeah. It is what it is, I'm not going to lie. Ever been into any harder drugs? <coughs> no, 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 never. I don't know, man. Never, not since you've died. I'll be on this grave. I believe you. Yeah. We're, um, I want to I want to wrap this I want to wrap this prison up before long. You know you, you've been in a little prison a long time, Paul. You know. Yeah. Well, you, can't, I, you, you can. Yeah. But I just want to say this: I don't want to go through every charge you've ever had and every time you've yeah, been in yeah. prison. Yeah. We're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna. 
go to your last sentence now. Well, I'm right. one of the. I'm step. pretty aware what you have from been up with. Go on, what is it? I'll, I'll just say one last thing. So, the worst thing I ever done in jail, this was the last thing. I uh, broke a screw's leg, yeah. I was, um, I was, on, a, I was on an aggravated burglary charge going through someone's door with a machete. I was uh, 2015, so I got I got blamed for going through someone's door with a machete, yeah, uh, and chopping and uh, chopping them up and robbing them, yeah. But it wasn't me, obviously, because uh, I got I got guilty in the end. So on that sentence, yeah, um, I broke a screw's leg by mistake. So, um, my mate was fighting. I went down one side of the way. She went down the other. But I didn't see her. Do you know what I mean? I was the man at the time. I was on the man. You weren't sent. No, no, no. I was on the man. I was on the man for Agberg. So I ended up like hitting the lad. Yeah, mm -hmm. hitting the lad. But the woman. But I didn't see her. She was like on the side. I can't have hit her across the leg. Yeah, I know it's a woman. But listen, I've never ever hit a woman on a mock on a man. So I hit her by mistake. Yeah, but. If it wasn't for her, I would be uh, years in jail for it. But what she done, because I was her cleaner on the wing, she was like main cleaning officer, yeah? And because I was her cleaner, and she knew I was a good lad, and you know, I was just trying to keep my head down on that wing, yeah? She wrote a letter to the governor when I was down the block to say, look, I don't want to press any charges against Mr. Greenoff. He's been a good cleaner to me, he's always shown me respect. He's always done what I wanted. He's never been anything bad to me. So what they don't, they obviously let me off with it, but because no jail would accept me because I was on remand. And I've obviously what I've done, and obviously the charges I was in jail for. So I had to stay down the block for nine weeks, and my head was going down there. Like I was smashing the pad up every day. I was just losing the plot. But what saved me from that there, yeah, near the end, because I was completely suicide, yeah? What saved me was reading, you know, Graham Seed? Yeah. From Middlesbrough. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul Venice met him. Big respect, Paul, big respect there to uh, Graham Seed. So that's why, when I read Graham Seed's book, that's what basically saved me from thinking about committing suicide. Because imagine being down in the room for, for, for nine weeks, bro. You get what I mean? And then one week, after, not long after I read this book, um, I was my pad up again just because I was just bored. And then I ended up having, a, uh, having it with the Starnado team. They chucked me in the yard into the cage. And then next, about half an hour later, they come with me back, yeah? And uh, basically said, look, you're going home. I was like, what do you mean I'm going home? Fuck off, I'm not going home. Stop buying the meal. They were like, look, your case has been discontinued. The police done more, more work like around the case and realised that these drafters, these drug dealers who said that we went in their house to rob them with machetes were lying because they didn't like my mate, didn't like my family, not my family, the, the, you know the travellers family who I'm going with, they just wanted to set them off to get them off the streets. And you got robbed in with it. I got robbed in with it. So, but then the police found out that they were lying. So that's what I mean. I've, I've, I've been in trouble for a few times for things I haven't even done. Tell me about your last sentence. The last sentence was the, the was the change. The last sentence was the change. I was in Berwyn. Uh, no, I was in Old Coast first, and I moved to Berwyn. But I was with a girl, and she was changing me as well. She was helping me so much because she had a good job. She was, she did. I, I, even though I'm not with her now, she helped. She's helped me to, to be the person I am now. To be honest, that not be honest to you. So I was in there, and my dad, uh, my mum always said, look, your dad will pass away when you're in jail, mate, yeah? So basically, my dad passed away, but the night before my dad passed away, she said, Paul, like, not like, she didn't say it like Paul, but she, you know, she was ill saying it, please promise me I'll never go back. And I promised her. And from that day, the next day she passed away, I went to a funeral. And I've not been back since the three and a half years of being out now. But don't bear in mind, I've done from 2005 to 2018 at the end, every single year in jail, without a fail, every single year. Some years in the same year, you know, going through, mm -hmm. going through. So, so from the end of 2018, I've not looked back, mate. I've, not done, I've just not done mm -hmm. jail. I've, I've done with that life, mate. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Put it all behind you, Paul, eh? Put it all behind me, mate. Don't get me wrong, I'll still speak to my mates and that, who, who, who I've been in trouble with and stuff like that, but they know now. I went out with my mate Friday, but he knows now I'm a different guy. If he starts being a bit of a leery little man, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll just pull him to the side and say, look, look you're with me, sorry, you fucking head out. Do you know what I mean? I'm not having none of that fucking daft bullshit. 
I'm not a long type life no more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's it, I'm not, not doing it, mate. <clears throat> right, Paul, let's get on to your YouTube channel. Yeah, tips, yeah. How people know you mainly. Yeah. Fighting Trolls. First of all, the name, Fighting Trolls. Yeah. Where did that come from? Well, where did it come from, mate? It was a lad, I don't want to mention the lad's channel because he's a bit of a helmet, like, not like he's, yeah, he's a bit of a wrong kind of guy, yeah? So it was a guy that was doing live streams. And uh, I see him getting headed, like trolled all the time, really. And he was getting trolled every night, getting trolled every night. So I just thought, I'm going to make a channel and call it Fighting Trolls and fight these people, yeah? Just show me how the buzz in it. And then, yeah. so I made this Fighting Trolls. And then, Did you mean fighting as in fighting you? You just got to verbally attack them back? Is that your yeah, probably verbally attack them, like not, right. not so much fight them. Like, okay. Right? So don't get any ideas, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, mate. Yeah. So. Want to get on to a bit of a bit of a bit of where it is lately. A bit of where it is lately. A bit what most people, you know, yeah. get this impression here. Yeah. Because, in all honesty, yeah. When I look at you, I mean, I don't watch everything all the time. When I watch you on fighting trolls, most of the time, you're all over the place. Yeah. Your head's all over the place. Yeah. One minute you're like here. Next minute you're there, I can speak to you on the phone and they'll be like, fucking hell, he's in a good mood tonight. Yeah. And I watch you on your, on your channel and you fucking twist up and spit and some about everyone about everyone. And then I'll, I'll, I'll say, that's fucking, that's a bit heavy, I'll knock that off. And I'll go back five minutes later and you're just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like. Yeah, I think it's, mate, apart from my ADHD, um, what I think it is as well, Dan, I, I had an, ass uh, an assessment, so I could have bipolar, yeah. But they messed up with the assessment, and I, I just couldn't be asked to go back. I just couldn't be asked to go back to do it to us. Yeah. Yeah. What I think. Yeah. What I see. Yeah. Is I see somebody who gets who lets everybody get under the skin. Yeah. What I see is a high percentage of your content. Yeah. Being reacting. Yeah. To what someone might or might not have said, or what a group of people might or might not have said. That's what I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I see, that's what I see. Yeah. Your lives, I, mean, I used to watch your lives a lot. Yeah. It seems to me like the vibe's gone down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it has, yeah. That's it what has. I see. Yeah, yeah, right. I see the vibe's gone yeah, down. Right, yeah. The yeah, vibe, yeah. It's, it's dulled down. Do you know what it is since that? It's since uh, the, free, the, the 3D Fight Club come along. And since that came along, a lot of people got jealous, yeah? And they started turning a lot of people. They can't, listen, they can say, oh, we're not jealous. But they started turning a lot of people against it. So they stopped watching and they started just, you know, not coming on the channel. And say, so say if someone came on the channels, so say like, for instance, a lad called Flavors would come on the channel, loving it. People would text him on Instagram, don't go on there, he's this, he's that, don't go on there. So yeah. they're turning people away from the channel. I get that. Do you get what I mean, Dan? I do get that. But let's just put that aside a minute for now. Yeah. You're always going to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. You're never going to stop that. You're never yeah, going to yeah. stop people wanting to divide on YouTube. Yeah. Having to pick a team. Yeah. Can't get involved with anything now on YouTube without people wanting to know what fucking side you're on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, just it's, be, yeah. it's a funny one because yeah. we are who we are. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We are who we are. But. Before I, before I say anything further, we're not going to use the word jealousy, right? Yeah. We're not going to use that word, but let's just put it, let's just say it as it is, right? People out there on YouTube, on YouTube, right? <laughs> they're jumping on people to do with this 3D Fight Club. Now, but I'll, we'll get in, I'll get into 3D Fight Club in a minute. But for what I see, I see people giving Paul here a bit of stick and other people that were on 3D Fight Club. That's what I see. Yeah, yeah. I see people giving you stick. Now let's have it right. You said you were going to fight somebody, did you not? Yeah. You got in there and fought somebody, did you not? Yeah. This wasn't, you know, a case where you shit your knickers, was it not? No. You got in there and done it, didn't you? Call main event. Call main event, my man. Right. Yes, yeah. So you got in there and you done it. Yeah. You said you were going to do it. Yeah. You put it out there that you were going to do it. Yeah. And you done it. Yeah. Now let that be a lesson learned 
to a lot of people out there on YouTube who say they're going to do something. So, that, sorry, don't forget, I'm not a, a proper fighter either. I'm, a, I'm aware of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Don't interrupt me on my own podcast ever again. <laughs> sorry, that, sorry. No, listen, brother. Sorry. In fairness, these lads said they were going to do something. And the lads done, the lads done it. You know, now... We'll get back on to you in a minute. There's something I want to say about 3D Fight Club. You've mentioned it. You've brought it up. Yeah, yeah. So I'll give me an opinion on it. No problem. I think what they've done to you yeah. was wrong. To me? Yeah, to everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. I'm allowed an opinion. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think what they've done to you is, was wrong. Yeah. Now let's just say, which I can't see happening, they turn up tomorrow with all the money that they promised you and all the money that they promised every other fighter. Yeah. To me, that's still not good enough. No. This is me talking now. I know yeah. this isn't your opinion, no, but I'm fine. having me five pence worth on it. No, that's fine, but... If... Right, let's put it another way. These lads present themselves like they're doing all right. Present themselves like they've got a couple of quid. Yeah, yeah. That's just me and that's just what I interpret as yeah. my perception yeah. when I see them. Yeah. To present themselves like they've got a couple of quid. If these fighters on this card got paid what they said they were going to pay, forget about contracts and that. You're not working. This isn't Eddie Hearn you're working for. <laughs> this is word of mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? No? Yeah, it's word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. If someone tells you an agreed figure what you should be fighting for, yeah. that is the figure that you expect. You know? Yeah. So if everyone had been paid what they said, yeah. there'd have been a buzz around YouTube. Everyone would have been like, oh my God, have you seen what these YouTubers are not getting paid for Paga? And they'd be drawn in a load of good fighters because everyone would be like, hang on a minute, this is a winner, this 3D fight club. And there'd be this big buzz, this big attraction. Yeah. You'd want names coming from all. I was thinking, I want, I want some of these wages. Because grown men are no longer fighting for trophies. Grown yeah. men are fighting for wages. So when you're promised a wage that you don't get, and then you've got the promoters kind of weeks later saying, we're just going to give them what we think they're worth. Does that sound like a promotion that you want to trust? Yes or no? Yes or no? Uh, the way you're saying it, no. Right. But I'm getting, I, 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 I say it's, I'm getting paid Wednesday because obviously the tickets are sold. And that, like I say, I don't really want to get involved in... No, I know that. Going after anybody's money for them, anything like that, Paul. That's down to you, lads. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. down to you, lads. But this is a new system that I've I never know. came across yeah. in my life. You're connect, you connect, really. They could have had it, like you said, bouncing, bouncing. They could have just got their own money out, give everyone a nice big fat wedge, and everyone, like you said, would have been like, oh, let's get on there. Let's Run this get... first show at a loss. Yeah. Run it at a loss. Yeah. Here to buzz. Yeah. Now you've got everyone's perception of just thinking, like, you know, I'm getting a lot of hate down for, like, half, like, today, look, I'm getting paid on, the, on this day, that day. But, like, obviously, I did sell the most tickets, I saw this, but obviously, I still haven't been paid before the month yet. Like, but, like, hopefully. I know what you're saying. Hopefully, I will. And there's other lads there who haven't had a nut. You no. know, they haven't had a nut. There's a lad there who I know, he sold a table, full table, and he hasn't been given a penny. Like, and apparently, they've told him he's not getting out. What? Aye. Now, like I say, this isn't a personal attack or no, a personal no, assault on no, anybody. No. But, you know, ask yourself a question. If you're fighting for wages and you're no longer representing the club and you're no longer doing it for the glory or the trophy on your shelf, does this sound like a promotion that you want to be fighting for? Because to me it doesn't. No, I don't say it. Now, like I say, Things are different, times change, I understand this pay-per-view crack and all that. Yeah, yeah. But I've, the 12, out of the 12 paid fights that I've had, yeah. I've seen promoters literally getting chased around the building at the end by maybe two or three fighters who haven't had the wages. Well, I'll be honest, I, I, I well, basically lent the money to pay for my own town, this, that, the other, because I thought I was getting a, an envelope at the end of the fight. That's what I thought I was getting. Well, but, you, I think you'd be right to think that. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that'd be. I've never heard. Uh, apparently, the BFBA do it this way as well, but I've never heard of a fighter leaving an arena 
without getting his wages. Yeah. And I've seen promoters try and do that to fighters before, yeah. and it hasn't ended well yeah. for a promoter, like there and then. Yeah. Now, also I think, and I'm of the belief, that if you were dealing with, let's say, a load of fighters, yeah. experienced fighters, yeah. maybe of the unlicensed or the bare knuckle circuit, I don't think a group of fighters who know how the pay structure for events work yeah. would be as quiet as you lot would, would be being in Yeah, no, I mean, no, it wouldn't be, no. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, that's your opinion. Everyone's right to that opinion. Everyone's you know. allowed one. Yeah, not allowed one. It's, it's, not not like, it's not like if, you know, you kick it off. It's an opinion. Everyone is allowed that opinion. Absolutely. Opinion. I hope everyone gets the money. Yeah, well, I, I hope I, yeah. I, I reckon that, uh, yeah. You know, it's all right saying, people saying, you know, we don't think, we only think the worth this much. Yeah. In my well, world, there's no such thing as an overpaid yeah. fighter. Can I just How can you be overpaid for yeah, fighting? Yeah. You fight. Can I tell you my agreement that quick? So my agreement was, they said to me, how many tickets do you reckon you The figures that don't have to be anybody's business. You no, don't, no, Don't put the figures out there. No, I'm going to put the figures out there. They, this is what they said. How many tickets do you reckon you could sell? Uh, sell? How many pay-per-views? Blah, 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 blah. So I said, I could probably do this much, that much, this much, that much. Um, I did do this much, that much, this much, that much. Um, YouTubers or not, you lads deserve your respect yeah. for going in there bare knuckle. Yeah. Bare knuckle, by the way. Yeah. Going in there, doing what you said you were going to do. Yeah. And then you deserve yeah. it. That's why all these trolls are here, yeah. They're like, that. oh, you lost, you've done this, you've done that, you've done this. But you don't leave your bedrooms, yeah, for months and weeks and years on end, yeah. And you think you can yeah. talk. Do you know what I mean, Dan? Yeah, I, I, don't I, get, it. I yeah. get it. I get it. I get it, Paul. Right. If, if I may just say something, brother. No problem, right. my lad. To me, yeah. that's your number one problem there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Very busy addressing yeah, what yeah. somebody might or might not have said. Yeah. You need to get to a place where you can learn how to handle it for Paul. Yeah. How Paul's head is gonna handle this, this yeah. stuff. Because the second you stop doing what you've just done there, the second you stop, yeah. the second you'll stop noticing it. Yeah. The second you feel this energy yeah. that people are putting onto you. People yeah. you don't even know. People who couldn't get in a fucking ring and do what you've done. Yeah, it is hard done, thank you. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And these are the type of people that you're letting bother you. Yeah, yeah. You're letting them bother you. You let yeah. them get under your skin. I see it every time you're on the camera. Yeah, yeah. Get some 80% of your content. Yeah. Replying to divvies. I know, yeah, I know. Why do I do it? I've asked you this a million last times on the phone. Last night I was showing them with bank statements, how much dough will I get, yeah. how much this. Like, Paul, it's none of their business. Do you know what it is, Dan? This is, this is what plays with your mind, I'll tell you, yeah. Vic. So, why I do a lot of it is because when the real people are watching me, I don't want the real people to think that I'm lying about stuff. So, I have to, I feel like I have to prove everything. You don't. And I know. You well, from now on, when you watch this, <laughs> that is it. That is it. Yeah. Well, from this Paul, day forward, I'm changing. Yeah. Tell you. Listen, you, your channel, Paul, right? It's got a, it's got a good following. Yeah. For, for, for some following for, for, for good or bad, it doesn't matter to follow it. Yeah. On YouTube, without your followers, without your audience, yeah. you're nothing. We're nothing. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You need to get in a better headspace, mate. Yeah, yeah. Because I see somebody, I see somebody, mate. I'll try and talk to you a little bit about it afterwards, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. This is coming from somebody who knows how. This yeah. is coming from somebody who, two years ago, wanted to kill anybody with a negative comment. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. You, as soon as you get into the mindset and the headspace of, this energy, even if it's bad, yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Your name's out there yeah. in a better or worse a fashion. It doesn't matter. People are talking about you. Yeah. There's a buzz. Yeah. There's a rumor. There's a whatever it is yeah. about about Paul. Yeah. You don't need to first little whisper. You get a bit jump on it and give it both barrels. Nah, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Let it play out. Yeah. Ignore it. If anyone asks you, if you don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Because you're not giving it your attention yeah. and where your focus goes your energy flows yeah. and that's where you are yeah. that's where your focus goes yeah. retaliating and responding oh, to yeah. divvies so now now, <laughs> now we've done this now yeah yeah. You're going to see a new man, trust me. Well, I hope so. I promise you, you're going to see I a new man. So. You don't need to promise me. No, no, me. But, no, but what, what you're saying to me now, I listen. Like to, to respectable people, I do. Listen, I, trust me, 
I've listened to quite a lot of respectable people over the last couple of years, and it's helped me out to get them too. I do. So, and I think the potential, the potential future positivity with your channel, yeah, depends on this. Yeah, it depends on this issue. Yeah. Whether you're going to be still going around the same block in a year's time, yeah. still addressing the same people yeah. over the same issues, or do you decide to completely cut them loose? Let them say whatever they want to say yeah. and take your channel to where you want to take your channel. Yeah, well that's it, we're going to have a belt off. Yeah? Belt off. Is there anything else, Paul, that you'd like to say? Any shout outs you'd like to give? Anything coming up on your channel that you'd like to plug or promote? Yeah, I'm going to, go, I'm going to give a big shout out to PP. So go subscribe to him, Paul Venice, Fairy Fish, uh, Jay, Scouse Jay, both Share Me Bullies. And there is a few more, but I, I mean, because of my mind space, it's a bit hard to remember everyone. But listen, just respect to everyone else that's on my channel as well. Thank you so, so much for supporting Thank you. Me. Big love and respect, honour. Thank you, Dan. Not a problem. Thank you, everybody. It's been a just pleasure. Little quick shout out to uh, Paul Venice, Billy Moore, James English, and uh, the big bull. Adam the big bull. bull. Get him, Get him, Get him, Get him. 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 Get